As a whitewater kayaker of almost 30 years, I was skeptical the first time I saw a pack raft. They looked flimsy, light, easy to flip. What could you really paddle in a duck boat like that? But when I slid my legs into one and pushed off into the water for the first time, my expectations were blown away. Not only do these little boats make paddling the off the roads, rivers and creeks of Alaska possible, they do so with remarkable ability. But just how far could I push these tiny rubber boats? Class 3? Class 4? Maybe even Class 5? This is the story of the hardest river I've ever paddled in a pack raft. Oh hey, it's you! Alaska Brian here. Welcome back for another adventure tale from the land of the midnight sun. I was never a bold kayaker. My sense of self-preservation almost always won out over my lust for that cold rush of adrenaline. Nevertheless, I occasionally battled with class 5, that experts only grade. In a pack raft, however, I started out with class 2, but as I got more experience and more confidence, I eventually turned my attention to Alaska's most famous proving grounds, Six Mile. I made a video about my experience paddling Six Mile. You can watch it somewhere up here. In short, that classic piece of Alaska water consists of three canyons, each a little bit harder than the last. By the summer of 2020, I'd gotten the full descent of all three canyons. At the bottom, I was ecstatic, like I'd reached the apex of my pack rafting career. Sure, there were more talented people out there paddling harder things than me, but I figured I'd push it about as far as I ever would. Two months later, however, I proved myself wrong. In South Central Alaska lies a range of jagged mountains. These gnarled peaks stab into the sky like a serrated cutlass. Though the highest of these peaks touches only 8,849 feet, no one doubts that these mountains, draped in glaciers and shrouded in mystery, are among Alaska's most scenic and most treasured. These are the Talkeetna Mountains. Within the Talkeetna Mountains lives one of Alaska's most popular playgrounds, Hatcher Pass. Hatcher Pass is a wonderland, immensely popular for backcountry skiing, hiking, climbing, and photography. Hatcher Pass is natural beauty at the highest level, but far more accessible than other Alaska ranges. As you drive the winding road that carries you into the Talkeetna Range, it is impossible not to notice the tumbling stream chugging along beside you. As a kayaker and pack rafter, it's hard not to imagine testing yourself in its frisky rapids. And so finally we meet the main character in this story, the Little Sasitna. Although the Little Sasitna could be thought of as a peer, or even competitor, to Six Mile, as both her roadside runs of similar length and difficulty, their character couldn't be much more different. While the rapids of Six Mile tend to come in short pool drop constrictions and ledges, the Little Sioux is a never-ending maze of gumdrop glacial boulders and technical rapids that test your technique, endurance, and skill. The takeout beer never felt as hard-earned for me as it did at the end of the Little Sioux. In just five miles, we'd navigated countless boulder gardens, scouted a dozen rapids, 
and survived at least six near flips. But enough talk, let's plunge into the action. At the put in, the creek was tiny and the rapids were tight. This is where pack rafts excel. Immediately, we encountered compact technical class three, the type of rapid that defines this incredible run. And sprinkled in were drops that were even harder. As the creek picked up tributaries, the rapids grew faster and more powerful, but the tight, maze-like nature of the run remained constant. Since neither of us had paddled the run, we scouted everything we couldn't see, which was practically every corner. Halfway down, when we started encountering named rapids, I was already feeling mentally and physically taxed. But we were only just getting to the meat and the hardest rapid of all, we would soon learn, waited at the very end.
drop after drop, ledge after ledge. How much navigating can one person do in just a couple of hours? You could never let down your guard. Even the lesser rapids hid holes and pin spots that could put a damper on our day.
Ferry. Yeah. Finally, we made our way through some of the Crux Rapids, including Boulder Drop and the Improbable Death Ferry. With just half a mile to go, my GoPro battery died. I was ready for things to ease up, but shortly after, I took a bad line, got slammed into a boulder, and nearly flipped again. By the time we arrived at Bridge Drop, the last and perhaps worst rapid of the entire run, I was ready to give up, portage around it, and call it a day. But after a long scout, we spotted what might be a line through the fence of boulders and decided to shoot it. And thanks to our wives cheering from shore, we even have video to prove it. the end, I was exhausted. The Little Sioux is a beautiful, incredible, fun, and immensely challenging pack raft run that keeps your attention from beginning to end. There are literally no pools, and the only break you get is if you claw your way into one of the tiny eddies in the class 3 between harder drops. For us, this was the culmination of a summer with many descents under our belts. And to this day, it remains the hardest thing I've ever paddled in a pack raft. Thanks for spending a little time with me and letting me tell the tale of the Little Sioux. If you like this, don't forget to poke that like and subscribe comment. It helps me out a lot and it costs you nothing. Plus, I'll love you forever, which is the best perk for you, I'm sure. For now, I gotta bounce. Until next time, stay interesting and stay wild. Shh. <sharp inhale>